All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about stored code, pending codes, and permanent codes, and how to get rid of permanent codes. Um, kind of giving the ideal. This is gonna be more on a how to get rid of a permanent code, but you'll get an idea of what the stored code and a pending code is. All right, so let's start off with the pending first. So normally when you get a code um, or you have an issue that's coming up, you'll normally get a pending code. That is letting your computer know, be like, hey, we got an issue with this sensor or this certain problem. And it's gonna do a couple drive cycles <coughs> if it's not electrical. If it's electrical, right away. If it's a sensor, right away. Like if it's a faulty sensor, normally because it has an electrical current, those will get a faster response as versus something more mechanical as versus you're driving around. Now, this kind of disregards from a oxygen sensor. Now, obviously that has to go through a little cycle. Sometimes they're immediate and sometimes they are, um, they take a while. Now, after the pending is done, so let's say the sensor fails once, passes again, it'll still stay pending. Now, if it fails again, it'll go over the file, let's just say, you know, the code number P0, you know, whatever it is, misfire, will get sent over to a stored file. And from there, that will let your computer know, hey, we have an actual issue going on and that'll illuminate your check engine light. All right, now permanent. So for 2009 and above, a permanent code cannot be stored. It cannot be in your system. If it is, guess what? You won't pass smog, well, in California at least. So for vehicles 2009 and up, that's the issue that we have. So if you try to clear the code, especially on an EVAP, now they, they're kind of trying to get hit as hard on that because EVAP is the only monitor that can be incomplete. So that is kind of, we got to get that fixed. Now there's some vehicles, even though you fixed it and everything, um, you sometimes you got to get the computer reprogrammed on, on that because of the, the permanent code won't erase. Um, sometimes you just need to upgrade the computer. There might be a TSB. It's happened to me only once that I've ever came across and there was a TSB for a program update. Got that computer updated, bam. Uh, was able to get rid of the permanent code immediately. So now I'm going to kind of show you in the scanner and so forth. If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future. And thanks for your support, guys. I appreciate it. We're about 25K subscribers, and I really appreciate the support. I mean, like deep down, bottom of my heart, like I wouldn't have got this far with this motivation to keep going and trust me i i love teaching people i love helping out people i'm not one of those guys that are like hey you know what you got to pay me for my time well obviously i got to make money and i got to feed my family on that sense but if i can help you guys save money i don't mind if i talk to you guys i don't mind lately i haven't been replying as much obviously i just got a full-on work schedule load um it's it's hard to do that edit videos i haven't been editing videos too so i mean yeah sorry um i know it's kind of off subject sorry for talking so much on that but again i appreciate the support i'll probably make another video on that um but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and start this video right after the intro and get back to it so here's a little scanner 25 dollars works great um again stored code do we have any? There's none. So usually you would start off with the penning to see if there's any penning codes. So we have none. I already fixed the issues on this car. So we have permanent codes. So right here, even though we don't have a stored code, we have no pending codes, but we have a permanent code. So to get rid of this permanent code, we actually have to do a drive cycle. And then that could take up to three to four. Anywhere, well, anywhere I've seen two drive cycles to about six drive cycles. Um, the computers want to make sure that it, you know, that the issue is not being cleared and that you're not just clearing it with the scanner so, you know, you don't try to pass smog on a, with a problem on the vehicle. So let's go ahead and go back 
and we're going to go ahead and look at IM readiness. So this is your monitors to let you know, hey, I drove the car and we are okay on our system. So we have a catalyst, which is your catalytic converter that's incomplete and our evap system is incomplete that's the only one that can be incomplete because that sometimes takes the longest our o2 sensor our o2 sensor heater circuit um, and our egr system so now these guys right here um, this is your your main since the dtc is cleared so we need to make sure that we go into this system and make sure we got that all gone like all of that has been okayed or complete depending on what your scanner says evap can be the one that's incomplete unless you have an issue um, so now let's go to this drive cycle so this is what i mean we're not going to go ahead and go into since dtc is cleared we're actually going to go into drive cycle so when you start driving we got to check our um see which ones are completed now there can be some that will be subjected to being na that will mean it's not applied during that drive cycle so catalyst is part of it <coughs> and right here so as you can see we have incompletes you see evap is not necessary to complete that drive cycle because again it does take a while for it to complete now there's some vehicles that will be there and they complete pretty fast i think the prius is on there <coughs> one of the pre like i think believe the priuses have that available so we have to drive into these guys complete so now let's say the o2 sensor both of the o2 sensors and heater and the egr and the cat along with the fuel systems misfire and the i forgot what the abbreviation of this guy is for completes right so then what you go ahead and do this is after you drive you turn off the vehicle in the safe area you like you pull over and then let's say you have the door open so you open up the door take out the key give it about like two seconds and then put it back in and then go ahead and start the vehicle and then same thing with your scanner kind of kick this out <coughs> and then you're going to go ahead and back go back into it so right here so we're going to go back to the readiness and then again we're going to go back into drive cycle and then we're going to go ahead and drive it again so now we're going to go ahead and repeat that process into everything says either okay or complete and then once you're done doing that um every time it's complete like you passed everything go back into read codes and then go ahead and check your permanent now depending on how many drive cycles for certain codes that need a certain amount of drive cycles they will start clearing right up and then that's pretty much how you'll get rid of your permanent codes. Now, if you already completed, let's say, more than 10 drive cycles, then you have a software issue and you need to get an update. From there, you got to take it to the dealer or get a programmer that can come and program the vehicle. Um, and that's pretty much it on that subject. So if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And I hope this video was detailed as possible. If not, let me know. Let me know if you got any ticks on tech tips on there uh, comment down below for to help out everybody on this so i appreciate you guys very much seriously and thanks for watching